Despite the grandiose advertising and boasting by NASA, ULA, and Boeing, the scheduled launch of the Starliner earlier this month faced yet another delay. Honestly, I don't want to criticize the Starliner, but its recent new delay is truly unacceptable. In fact, there were warnings about the Starliner spacecraft, but did NASA and Boeing negligently overlook them? What exactly happened with this expensive spacecraft? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. After the initial delay caused by a faulty valve on the Atlas V rocket, officials from NASA, Boeing, and ULA had scheduled the launch for later this week on May 17th. But now, that's no longer the plan. Teams detected a small helium link in the Starliner service module and have pushed the target date back an additional four days. This means that the first crewed launch of Boeing's Starliner spacecraft, which is years behind schedule and over-budgeted by more than $1.4 billion, will not take place before next Tuesday, May 21st. So, what is the problem with Starliner? In fact, during the first delay, aside from the valve issue on the Atlas V rocket, engineers discovered an unrelated helium leak in Starliner's propellant pressurization system. At that time, they believed it was still within the safety limits of the flight. However, after the Atlas V and Starliner were rolled back to the VIF for the oxygen and valve replacement, managers decided to take a closer look at the helium issue. The leak was detected in the distribution manifold located within one of the four doghouse assemblies situated around the outer surface of the drum-shaped service module of the Starliner spacecraft. Each of these assemblies housed four orbital maneuvering and attitude control OMAC thrusters, as well as four small reaction control system maneuvering jets. Pressurized helium gas is used to push propellants to the rocket motors in each doghouse. The newfound helium leak has been traced to a flange on a single reaction control system thruster in Starliner's service module. Bolts were retorqued and engineers believe the system is flight ready, but managers decided to pressurize the helium lines throughout the spacecraft to make sure the lines were, in fact, leak-free or within acceptable limits. NASA and Boeing are developing spacecraft testing and operational solutions to address the issue, Boeing wrote in the update. As part of the testing, Boeing will bring the propulsion system up to flight pressurization just as it does prior to launch, and then allow the helium system to vent naturally to validate existing data and strengthen flight rationale. This is the latest delay for the Starliner flight. It must be acknowledged that NASA and Boeing officials have been incredibly patient with this seemingly cursed spacecraft. Now, NASA, Boeing, and ULA all have to wait for this fateful flight. For Boeing, this is their first crewed mission, and for NASA, it's the first time since the shuttle era that the space agency is sending astronauts to the ISS on crewed and launch vehicles operated by companies other than SpaceX. This underscores the significance of the first flight of the Starliner program. They only have one choice to win this challenge. If there is unexpected failure, the story of Starliner will definitely fall into the abyss. But can NASA and Boeing officials ensure the reliability and safety of Starliner? Although the company stated in its update that mission teams are also completed through a thorough review of the data from the May 6 launch attempt and are not tracking any other issues, to be honest, that still makes lots of us feel anxious. When there have been so many mistakes, our trust in them diminishes, and notably, that's not the only reason. The valve issue and the potential helium leak problem seem to have been forewarned by a former contractor supplying valves to Boeing. Aerojet Rocketdyne on May 8, Valvetech, a manufacturer previously hired by Boeing supplier Aerojet Rocketdyne to build valves for the Starliner's propulsion system, is warning NASA to immediately halt the spacecraft's first crewed launch May 17. The company, which sued Aerojet in 2017 alleging a violation of non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, and misuse of trade secrets, urged the space agency to redouble safety checks and re-examine safety protocols. Before the mission, which was scrubbed on May 6 due to the valve issue, Aaron Favell, president of Valve Tech, warned of potential catastrophes if NASA attempts another launch, stating, As a valued NASA partner and as valve experts, we strongly urge them not to attempt a second launch due to the risk of disaster occurring on the launch pad. The buzzing sound indicating the leaking valve noticed before the launch could indicate that the valve has passed its life cycle. Immediately, Tori Bruno, CEO of ULA, pushed back on Favell's comments saying, not sure what to say about this one, close to none of it's correct, not urgent, not leaking, etc. Remarkable that that particular person quoted doesn't seem to know how this type of valve works. However, in reality, NASA and ULA investigated the issue and decided to remove and replace the faulty valve. They did not mention a leaking valve, only stating that the valve was fluctuating abnormally. In a blog post, NASA wrote, After evaluating the valve history, data signatures from the launch attempt, and assessing the risks relative to continued use, 
The ULA team determined the valve exceeded its qualification and mission managers agreed to remove and replace the valve. This seems to indicate that what Fauville said is relatively accurate. But more importantly, Fauville also mentioned the Starliner's valves. What I said was that NASA needs to redouble safety checks and re-examine safety protocols to make sure the Starliner is safe before trying to launch Starliner again. Although reluctant to believe, Valve Tech expressed concerns based on its experience as a supplier of four valve components for the Starliner providers. Additionally, Valve Tech and Aerojet Rocketdyne had a lawsuit in 2017. At that time, Valve Tech accused Boeing's partner, stating NASA, Boeing, and Aerojet qualified this valve for Starliner CFT without proper supporting data or previous history or legacy information, citing witness testimony from its November trial. The outcome of the lawsuit proved that Aerojet had violated two non-disclosure agreements, NDAs, and did not misappropriate trade secrets. However, the concerns regarding the adjustment and use of valves without proper data could still raise doubts about the safety and reliability of the Starliner spacecraft. Despite all the concerns raised by Valve Tech on May 8th, NASA, Boeing, and ULA seemed committed to attempting the Starliner CFT launch as early as May 17th, after replacing the faulty valve on the Atlas V rocket. It's unfortunate that the truth always comes out. What goes around, comes around. The Starliner has been delayed due to a helium leak issue in the spacecraft service module. Although it may not directly relate to the valve as Valvejet implied, it serves as a lesson for NASA, Boeing, and their contractors, including Aerojet Rocketdyne. Remember, Aerojet is not only responsible for the valves, but also produces various propulsion engines for the Starliner. It's best they don't get too overconfident and subjective with their first crucial flight. This is unlike the agencies that used to rule the aerospace industry. Since Boeing began the Starliner project, they have not had a dedicated team overseeing each aspect of the spacecraft's capsule. For example, in terms of flight software, Boeing divided it into two teams, ground system software and launch vehicle software. This led to a lack of cohesion. Although each team performed excellently individually, their integration was poor. This is also the reason why OFT-1 missed its mark, and many other issues were discovered after the completion of Starliner's two test flights. Overall, it can be said that all these mistakes stem from Boeing's management, production organization, and research methods. If they could learn, especially from their major competitor SpaceX, then perhaps their future would certainly be more promising. One major difference between new space companies like SpaceX and traditional aerospace firms is the vertical integration approach. If executed well, this approach can lead to faster, cheaper, and more efficient development and construction of their own technology. On the contrary, collaboration between two large aerospace corporations is often complex. For instance, if you're a Rocketdyne engineer working on propulsion engines and want to design a utility connecting to the service module, you need load limit info from Boeing. This involves working with a Boeing engineer and a procurement officer. Rocketdyne engineers need to verify this information. So you design widgets, then others perform structural analysis. You handle the procurement process to buy materials for that part, then go through an integrator and engineer to find a supplier to manufacture it. By the end of this process, dozens of different people and different departments at different companies may have been involved. This increases time and costs, and nobody feels ownership over the process. In a new space company, the process could be much simpler. One engineer designs a part and writes a purchase order for the shop to make that part. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.